Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. And our top story, in a Senate session held today at the Earl B. Otley Legislative Hall in St. Thomas, the Committee on Workforce Development, Consumer Affairs and Culture, they heard testimony from the Department of Labor indicating that their federal grants that play an intricate role in career training and services were mismanaged partially from lack of staff and some problems were inherited. Stephanie Brown has more. Reportedly stemming from 2008, the workforce in the territory missed out on opportunities from federal grants that provide youth training and employment programs as well as career services for adults. The Virgin Islands Department of Labor met with the 32nd Legislators Committee on Workforce Development, Consumer Affairs and Culture to address some of the department's long-term deficiencies. Is it then your testimony here today that you do play a role and that you do take responsibility for some of the problems that have been reported? by the federal government with respect to the grants under the Department of Labor. To an extent, yes. Thank you. Thank you. In June of 2016, the United States Department of Labor stated in a letter addressed to the Commissioner of the Virgin Islands Department of Labor, Catherine Henry, that the department failed to achieve 80% of the negotiated levels of performance for two consecutive years. Each grant, um, they're, they're given certain um, requirements. Exactly, and X amount for employment, X amount for stuff. Uh -huh. Two minutes. Director Romney Lee, would you like to speak more? I'm trying to like, get the most concise answer you can give. Along with the testimony on the management of the department's federal programs, legislators also inquired about job placements for young Virgin Islanders. So do you have anything set in concrete at this time? that will indicate to you whether or not we will have a summer program besides your hope? <laughs> At this time, yes. At this time, yes, we will have a summer program. Senator Myron Jackson inquired on the services and the process it takes to get young Virgin Islanders into the workforce. Many of our graduates, individuals who have dropped out, not only lack the um, skills and, and, and represent a significant skills gap, but they also are academically deficient. And it makes it harder for us to train them or to make them even be certified as trainable for many of the jobs that we're facing. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. Now, one of the directors at the Department of Labor stated that the summer youth job programs will be in effect this summer, but participants will receive less hours. In other news, around 12.15 today, News 2 was informed that an attempted robbery was reported. And as News 2 arrived on the scene, reporters saw the police officers and the ambulance at the scene. Chief Winsbuck McFarlane provided a brief statement over the phone informing that a burglar was found in the home in Christiansted Town near the graveyard. The burglar approached the female owner of the home and took her cell phone and fled on foot and knocked down a child with his body while fleeing. The burglar also discharged shots in the graveyard. Trial got underway Monday morning for Enrique Saldana, who is accused of murdering his wife almost three years ago. The 53-year-old former police captain is charged with one count each of first-degree murder, second-degree murder, first-degree assault, second-degree assault, and three counts of third-degree assault, all crimes of domestic violence in connection with the May 2015 death of his wife, Jeanette Saldana, 43. Prosecutors will be relying on the testimony of a number of witnesses to help them prove that on May 2, 2014, Saldana showed up at his wife's house and they began arguing. Then he debilitated her so that she couldn't fight back and then killed her. Later, Saldana called 911 to report that his girlfriend wasn't breathing and that he needed assistance to go to the hospital. He was in the area of food center at the time. An off-duty police officer, Corporal Bernard Burke, who heard the transmission, met Saldana at the hospital and helped him remove Jeanette McGrath Saldana from the Jeep Saldana was driving. The nine men and six women impaneled to hear the case also heard the testimonies of six other witnesses, including crime scene technicians and medical personnel. The case is being prosecuted by Assistant Attorney General Ednan Martinez, Naja Harrigan, and Quincy McCray. VI Superior Court Judge Michael Dunstan is presiding over the trial. Be sure to count on two to keep you updated. On Monday, 45 members of the Virgin Islands Police Department were elevated to new ranks. Seven were sworn in as captains, 12 were sworn in as lieutenants, 
and 26 as sergeants. Governor Kenneth Mapp and Lieutenant Governor Osbert Potter joined Police Commissioner Del Delroy Richards and St. Croix Police Chief Winsbrook McFarlin Sr. to congratulate the officers. Superior Court Magistrate Judge Jessica Gallivan administered the oath. I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, and I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of a police captain of the Virgin Islands Police Department with fidelity, so help me God. Congratulations. Promoted to the rank of Captain Lut Petra Olson. Promoted to the rank of Captain Sunielsko. Promoted to the rank of Captain Edmund Walters. Congratulations to all the officers. Senator Marvin Blyden, Chairman of the Housing, Public Works, Waste Management and Planning Senate Committee, has scheduled a town hall meeting in conjunction with the VI Waste Management Authority, Island Green Living, and DPNR, and that's set for Thursday, March 23rd at the Turnbull Library starting at 6 p.m. This town hall meeting will be focused on the recycling laws that has become law, like the plastic bags ban, and two other pending legislation currently in the legislature going through the process. These entities, along with Senator Blyden's office, wish to engage the public with education about recycling and give the public the opportunity to have their questions answered. Again, that's 6 p.m. at the Charles Turnbull Library in Estate 22. Well, Vitima marked Tsunami Preparedness Week by participating in the annual Carib Wave 17 Caribbean Region Tsunami Response Exercise which is, was scheduled for today. The exercise, designed to help communities identify operational strength and weaknesses, and that took place around 10.15 a.m. Now today, Vitima activated the territory's 24 sirens to broadcast the system's test message and its all clear message. And uh, Vitima's director, Mona Barnes, is encouraging the community to learn more about this deadly force of nature during Tsunami Preparedness Week, week which is recognized March 19th to the 25th. Vitima is also urging the community to practice walking the evacuation route if they reside, work, or often play in the tsunami inundation zone. And that's uh, some students there at Lockhart Elementary School participating in their tsunami drill earlier this week. Now, siren locations are St. Thomas at the Lee King Airport, Crown Bay, Adelita Cancrine School, Griffith Park, Eden M. Bar Library, Yacht Haven, Sugar Mill, Long Bay, Megan's Bay, Cokey Point, Seaside Inn, Freedon Hoy, Red Hook Marina, Fort Christian, on St. Croix, it's at Kramers Park, DV Carina Bay, DC Canagata Ballpark, Government Parking Lot, Christiansted, Estate Cyan Farm, Williams Delight, La Valley, Government Parking Lot in Frederickstead, Fisher Street in Frederickstead, Spratt Hall in Frederickstead. Over on St. John, it's at the Winston Wells Ballpark, Cruz Bay, Guy Benjamin School, and Coral Bay. President Trump embarks on one of his most important roles, selling the Republican replacement plan for Obamacare. But it appears many lawmakers on both sides of the aisle still aren't ready to buy. It comes as President Trump's pick for Supreme Court faces tough scrutiny from lawmakers and as his administration unveils new travel restrictions. Kristen Holmes has the breakdown from Capitol Hill. President Trump taking on the role of closer in chief. Thursday is our chance to end Obamacare. Selling one of the biggest deals of his presidency, his proposed health care bill, not only to voters, but to reluctant Republicans. The GOP leadership revealing last minute tweaks overnight, hoping to appease both conservative and moderate lawmakers and rally the required 216 votes necessary for the bill to pass. And I would simply say that a lot of the members' concerns have been incorporated in this process. President Trump taking his pitch to Capitol Hill, meeting with Republicans two days before the vote. We had a great meeting, and I think we're going to get a winner vote. The president reportedly ramping up pressure behind closed doors, singling out some lawmakers who opposed the bill and telling Republicans they could lose seats if they didn't vote in favor of it. The president of the United States came to us and said, we all made a promise to the American people 
and we need to keep our promises. Some conservatives, though, still not sold. There still are not enough votes to pass this particular bill. The presidential push coming on day two of the confirmation hearings for Trump's Supreme Court pick. Judge Neil Gorsuch facing a long day of tough questions from senators on topics like abortion, torture, and the president's travel ban. I will apply the law. I will apply the law faithfully and fearlessly. On Capitol Hill, I'm Kristen Holmes. Keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. According to the numbers there, we can see everything down. The Dow 237, NASDAQ 107, S&P 500 down 29. Coming up on News 2, did you see this 60-foot vessel? One of two on display at the Yacht Haven Grand. Well, they're both here for a historic event. Details coming up. Nice shot there. We'll have some details on that a little later. Turn attention to Nevis. The Ministry of Social Development will host the I Am Woman Rally this Wednesday. The rally's theme, it's Be Bold for Change. Here's more. The Ministry of Social Development will this week, Wednesday, host the I Am Woman Rally at the Charlestown Secondary School grounds, more popularly known as the Villa. The rally is being themed hashtag Be Bold for Change and features speeches and performances from a number of local artists with guest artist Destra Garcia. Hi Nevis, this is your girl Destra, aka Lucy, aka the Queen of Bacchanal. And I will be in Nevis this week, 22nd of March, for the International Women's Day Rally. Be Bold for Change! See ya! Minister of Social Development, the Honorable Hazel Brandy Williams, made an appeal for women to join the march. We are hoping to gather at least 1,000 women to rally for women issues. We are rallying for issues such as um, stop the violence against women. We are rallying for issues such as equal pay for equal work and other issues, topical issues that are affecting women in our society. So I would like to take this opportunity to encourage as many women as possible to come out and rally with us. All you have to do is to register your name at the Ministry of Social Development or at the Gender Affairs Division and you will receive a t-shirt and that you will wear on that day as we rally through the streets of Charlestown. The event is part of a two-day forum Sustainable Development Unit will host on the 22nd and 23rd of March. The conference will look at the 2030 Agenda which sets out sustainable development goals by the United Nations. Agenda 2030, which was formalized in 2016, expects the goals and targets will stimulate action over the next 15 years in areas of critical importance for humanity and the planet. Well, turn our attention back here at home. The Svanen and Thera vessels sailed into the Yacht Haven Grand. The sailing vessels, Svanen and Thera, a 60-foot Bermuda Sloop rigged international open ocean racers that will be competing in this year's St. Thomas International Regatta, which is March 24th to the 26th. The Danish government and Mr. Soren Black from the Danish Council extended two wonderful opportunities for students and teachers to visit and engage in the vessels that will be in the territory in commemoration of the transfer centennial. While both types of vessels are designated warships, they are all used almost exclusively to train young cadets to become professional sailors and officers. The tall ship Denmark, that's scheduled to arrive in St. Thomas March 28th at 234 feet. It is a much larger training ship and international, international nautical ambassador for the government of Denmark. Virgin Isles Department of Education, St. Thomas, St. John District, Office of the Insula Superintendent. They're notifying parents of the early dismissal of all public schools on Thursday, March 23rd. 
quickly see the list of student release times by school. Again, for Thursday, March 23rd, dismissals will take place three hours before normal release times, and they are necessary to accommodate monthly job-embedded professional development for teachers. Lunch will be served before students are released, and buses will be dispatched early to schools to transport students to their normal drop-off locations. Parents are asked to ensure students are properly supervised following dismissals. School will resume normal times on Friday, March 24, 2017. Virgin Islands Good Food Coalition, they collaborated with Rich to Reach Reef Farms on St. Croix, as well as the Gift Hill School located on St. John to promote culinary arts and agribusiness in the territory. The students showcase their culinary talents by preparing and cooking a slow down dinner at the Ridge to Reef Farm on St. Croix. Ridge to Reef owner and the Good Food Coalition director spoke further on the importance of agriculture and youth. This is about to come out, but I just want to really point out because agriculture is not just about growing food all the time. I mean, who here has a cotton shirt on or pants? I do. Uh, the fibers, the, the, all the products that we enjoy in life that come from agriculture that we, we might not think about. And this evening I'm really excited because we have 11 students, 11 culinary arts students from Gift Hill who came over and they took over the farm, took over the kitchen, they harvested the food, they prepared, they were the front of the house, they were the back of the house. This was the first ever Food Learn Inter-Island field trip where we brought these students over. We've done a week of farm tours, restaurant tours. Meanwhile, in recognition of Agriculture Week, which is recognized this week, junior and senior high school students toured the farm in Bordeaux here in St. Thomas, and they learned more about the organization called We Grow Food, among other important facts. Here's more. I'm Mr. Manley James, the Director of Agriculture Development within the Department of Agriculture, and today we are having a wonderful day with the kids from different uh, schools. It is National Agricultural Week. We are celebrating National Agricultural Week. And we have the farmers with the students, and this is a wonderful combination. We know that agriculture is our livelihood, and no doubt with food security problems we have, we have got to teach the kids from young. So basically we have brought them from the different schools to see the farms, to go onto the farms to see what the farmers are doing. And here it is, we are presently at the Bordeaux Farmers Market, and some of the kids have gone to Mr. Myron Bodiman, or Henneman's farm. Some have gone to Mr. Ras Nashambai, and some have gone to Mr. Alpha's farm. Basically, they are seeing what they are doing, and many of them, many of them are really impressed by some of the things that are going on in terms of the range of tree crops. So basically, they are seeing the multi-cropping system being uh, conducted by some of these farmers, and they are seeing how they are using irrigation water from the ponds, and how they are using some of this water to transmit to the crop by drip irrigation lines. So really. It's a very good opportunity for the kids to learn agriculture firsthand. Commissioner of Agriculture Carlos Robles would like to remind the livestock farmers that St. Croix Abattoir is closed through Friday, March 24th. And the plant closure, they say, is necessary to maintain compliance with federal regulations. They expect to resume normal operating hours on Monday, March 27th. Virgin Islands Children's Museum, they celebrated their first anniversary this past weekend and it included a community day of play. There was mind-bending science demonstrations and crafts, a magic show, and so much more fun for all. The VICM is dedicated to providing unique and inspiring experiences through the use of exhibits and educational programming specifically designed for children. We are here, we're having a community day of play. It's our one year anniversary at the VI Children's Museum and it's been sponsored by Fintrack and Subbase Dry Dock. They've made this possible. We have amazing science demonstrations going throughout the day with UVI, their marine sciences, physics department, astronomy, you've got Edelman Observatory here and it's such a treat for the kids. I like about coming to the Children's Museum that they have fun educating stuff here. Like, for example, rock collections about stars and it shows this most interesting thing about magic. I like it about the museum that it has a place where children can play and it shows very interesting things. 
Well, she did a wonderful job, and what a great organization. Be sure to stick around. Your news to Accu Weather Forecast is coming up next. Taking a look at our current satellite, a large storm out in the Atlantic continues to pull a cold front across much of the central Caribbean here. However, stalled off just towards our north, and we're not expecting this frontal system to move any further south, though as we head towards the weekend, it could be a possibility to keep an eye on. But the bigger deal here, we have a large area of high pressure in behind this cold front. As that continues to slide eastward, we are going to see an increase in our trade winds. So with that cold front hanging just off towards the north, North, an increase in our trade wind flow. Well, we are looking at a higher chance of seeing those brief spotty trade wind showers. And we take a look at our current radar right now. You can see kind of that uptick, especially off towards that north where that front is beginning to pull in. Uh, we are seeing some isolated showers out there. As we move forward into tonight, we'll stick with partly cloudy conditions, 74 degrees. But then into tomorrow, uh, possibly a shower or two with these trade winds, 83 degrees for our high. We are going to see our winds begin to shift out of the east southeast. That's going to uh, bring in that uptick in moisture as we head towards the end of our work week. Until then, marine conditions aren't too bad either. 83 degrees for St. Thomas and those brief passing showers. Now we are going to see slightly more clouds across much of the islands from St. John into St. Thomas, St. Croix. So it's not going to be the most sunny day out there, but we will still get some of that vitamin D. Uh, just make sure you come prepared for those trade wind showers. Out on the waters for your marine forecast for the Atlantic. Once again, not too much going on. Those winds on the southeast, 10 to 15 knots, waves four to six feet. So it's a little bit choppy out there, but we aren't seeing any small craft advisories. Three to five feet on the Caribbean side, so slightly calmer there. Winds out of your east. Uh, 10 to 15 knots, so pretty decent marine conditions outside of uh, that increase in showers. Things are going to remain pretty calm. Now we could see a small craft advisory go into effect as we pull into the rest of this weekend. But outside of that, just a brief shower or two more likely seeing a chance of those showers for our Saturday and Sunday. Back to you, Sandy. Thank you for that. Let's look at our news to weather picture by DeMario Obeyes of Ricardo Richards Elementary School. Uh, looking for some showers there to cool things off. DeMario, keep that umbrella handy. You never know. Thank you for that. Send us your news to weather picture to the address on the screen and then be sure to tune in to see it right here on News 2. That is all for now. I'm Sandra Gomez saying thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.